So we're on a 1910 property today. We're on the roof and the things that you want to focus on are on the around the penetrations all flashing penetrations and uh, uh, the plumbing stacks. These are the primary areas for water leaks but also you want to pay attention to the roof covering material. You can see that this is almost we need to make sure that this is a 2 and 12 slope on the roof so it's rated for shingles. thing that we are going to call out is we need to make sure that uh, all the flashing needs to be painted and then these plumbing stacks they're too short they need to extend it a minimum of six inches above the roof covering easy spot right here there's a boot that's kind of buckled in the back and then if you look around the corner here you could see that it's it's cut so this is an easy area for a water leak Next area, this is not the proper installation of kickout flashing. Kickout flashing needs to be installed at an angle and there's an actual piece of the kickout flashing. All they did was bend out a piece of flashing and it needs to extend it four inches away from the siding. And you can even start to see some rot right there. So there's a chance that water's making it behind this wall veneer. Also with this kickout flashing, the condenser is right below the this roof slope so you're going to get all this water kicking off the side here all the water rolling off this roof and rolling right into the condenser and this will reduce the life expectancy of this unit another thing that we do document is we document like trees and stuff over the property yes this is not a deficiency but it's something that we want to let our clients know that they're going to have to maintain pretty regularly put the ladder up right here because i like to sidestep from the ladder and this roof is a little steeper over there but because i can safely get on and off it and really pay attention to my footing i don't mind walking this steep roof right here it's not too bad another angle right here i'm going to zoom in and you can kind of see the damage coming off of that makeshift kick out flashing right there there probably wasn't any before but not installing proper kick out flashing you're still going to have the same effect with this type of siding we got a square d 200 amp panel box and what you want to do is we go through and we taste test every afci and gfci but after you do this and you reset it you kind of want to stop um you want to stop what you're doing and go back and make sure everything came back onto the property and restart from your routine and we know which breakers on the ac and that probably isn't enough amperage for the ac now because you heard it shut off so that's a pretty good catch you can see right here the minimum breaker size is a it says minimum circuit amps is 26.2 so you have to round up which is 30 uh, breakers so they actually mislabeled the panel box and have the wires in the wrong spot you typically don't want an afci on your breaker it'll break it'll trip all the time all the way around the property you can see they put this board across the bottom to keep, help keep things out of the crawl space but actually all this wood to ground contact really invites termites and it's it's a hard to reach place so they are all nailed in which is kind of rough so it's it's going to be hard for me to get into this crawl space tyler also pointed out that across the back side of the property you can see that there's a lot of drainage issues and there and it's all pointing right underneath the structure here so we need to keep an eye out for erosion or if the water's traveling through easily next area here kick out is not required but we do recommend it because you can see this water line traveling down the side of the the brick and it just reduces the amount of water traveling across the structure so easy add-on there I, would, I definitely recommend it but not required you call and call out you're gonna see this across all our videos but you always need caulking improvements around light fixtures around the base to help prevent water penetration into the structure actually right here on this one you can see that the there isn't really a junction box and all the wires exposed right here so uh, this this is an easy area to cause electrical issues and also water penetration into the structure so you can see there. we have an outdoor ream gas water heater it needs to be installed like anything else you need hot and cold shutoffs you need a gas shutoff sediment trap 
and then also uh, one thing when I walked up this did not look like an outdoor ream water heater to me so if you don't know what you're looking at always take a look at the serial all you have to do is typically just type in the model number and the unit will pop right up and you'll figure out what it is and you can read out read the installation guides so with the wood siding around the sides you always want to give it the I like to call the poke test and uh, just to see how bad it is if it, it, if it is that bad uh, you can even see here that this is a little damaged it's not completely gone so they just need to come in here and repair it a little bit and they can keep it without having to rip up all the siding and I was wrong about crawling the crawl space this is an easy area for me to get in the crawl space which is nice second pass remember to always step out far look out far like you can even see over here on the wood siding something that was hard for us to see whenever we were walking close we have paint defects over there so things that you can see close you can't yeah things you see far away you can't really see close sometimes so make sure you do two passes of the exterior and look at it two times also part of swinging out wide we do report on like fences and stuff again this isn't required but again we don't inspect to the minimum we just like to try to inform our client about absolutely everything of what they're purchasing tyler was also pointing out to that problematic side there you can see where the laser pointer is the the roof is sloped also towards the house so you also have improper kick out flashing rotted wood and your condenser there so this is an, a, probably an area where you're going to want to add in a gutter to try to kick out the water away from the condenser and improve the kick out flashing and you're going to need to repair the siding there this is probably one of the biggest areas that we're going to have with the home walking through the structure as a home inspector you look a lot at a lot of windows something like this you definitely want to pay attention to so i Whenever I'm inspecting windows, I always use a box method and then a crisscross on each, and that's how I just scan each window. So you wanna take the time and uh, scan each window. In the master bathroom area, this is something that you always wanna pay attention to. Our first pass, we always turn on the hot water and then we didn't get, receive any hot water, so we thought that the hot water and cold water might be reversed, so we turned on the cold water. And we actually have zero hot water to this bathtub. Also, it's extremely loose. I always give these things a bump or a nudge. We want to secure this down a little bit because this pipe will eventually come loose or if not, it already might be loose. So when I'm in the crawl space, we're going to turn on the water. We're going to load the shower pan up with water to see if we have any leaks in this area. Okay, a few tips about getting in a crawl space. One thing that you want to do is Make sure that you have some sort of crawl suit and then some people like to wear boot covers or have a separate pair of shoes. Also, if you are in a crawl space, you see any standing water whatsoever, do not go over it because if there's any electrical wiring, you don't know what's in the water, you can actually cause harm to yourself. So it's about going to the next inspection. If they get upset, just let it go on. You know, it's about your personal safety. Next thing is too about a crawl space. If you do crawl in this, don't try to wear these more than two times because it you crawl through a lot of chemicals and who knows what. So when you run it through the washing machine, make sure that you wash it once all the way through and then you have to run another load with nothing in your washer, your wash machine. So you make sure that uh, none of that chemical and stuff go onto your next clothes. So uh, let's uh, get into that crawl space and see what we're gonna go find. Tip is if you are in the crawl space, it's always good to run water. So have your helper or the client or the agent watch the sinks and watch the tubs. You want running water through the plumbing because that's almost the only way that you can find the leaks through the drain lines. So we actually have the kitchen sink running, I have the hall bathroom running, and then in the master bathroom we have it plugged up. So we're gonna pull those plugs and send a massive load of water to see if we have any leaks in the, the plumbing underneath the crawl space. One of the first things you see a lot in crawl spaces is a lot of wood wood debris. This is something you want to call out because termites love this stuff. So I'd flip over a piece, a few pieces. Be careful whenever you do it. Things like to hide underneath this wood. I just had them pull the, the shower 
and check a look at that. We want to make sure there's negative slopes on all the plumbing. You can see it's all well strapped. We have a large volume of water traveling through the plumbing right now and uh, we're just pretty much looking for leaks. And um, I'm not really seeing anything which is which is pretty good, which is nice. It's not too bad. And they said this wood's original <laughs> or this is like a 19 whatever home. All of this stuff looks brand new. So I think they just kept the title of a 1920s home. And I'm glad, you know, you just really want to spend your time and take your time going through a crawl space. And you can see right here where a beam has fallen off the piers here. It doesn't look like it's caused any structural issues, but it's obviously supposed to be there. So we're going to write this up uh, to be repaired. Pretty easy repair in my opinion. It shouldn't cost too much. Next spot, looks like there's some rot on the siding here. This looks where a door is. So I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna go up there and double check how the door is sealed. I did get underneath there and I, I noticed quite a bit of rot on the uh, substrate there. So we're gonna get up and double check the sealant around the door and how it's set in. The thing that you wanna let your clients know that there's no 240 outlet. So this is a gas only dryer so this is something you just want to bring to their attention it's not a deficiency just like so it saves them some money and time and a headache down the line this next area you can see where they accidentally sheetrocked over an air register so like 71, 71. It's like 71. that's why it's important to use infrared technology on your inspections thing in the attic space you can see where they accidentally uh, forgot to insulate this sidewall here, you can see it opens up to the home, so you need uh, some bat insulation right here. There are some other minor deficiencies in here, but overall, this attic space looked pretty clean. The more that y'all start to watch the YouTube channel, you'll start to understand that no home is perfect. And the main thing is, is you want to see if this home meets your tolerances and if you're willing to tackle the projects. That's pretty much it. So if y'all have any home inspection questions, please drop them in the comments sections and please always like and subscribe to the channel and catch us on the next one. Thanks guys. Bye.